Hey, welcome to this quick tip video um, in the Godot engine. So I had a couple questions about uh, teleporting. So I thought I'd make a video specifically on teleporting to help people out, um, hopefully understanding what's going on. So it's actually a really simple concept. I've made two scenes, a 3D and a 2D scene. So let's look at these real quick. And these are very, very basic. I just have uh, some graphics here so we can see what's going on. And then um, let's go ahead and look at this script. So here I've got a super basic player controller script, and that's my only script on this in this uh, scene. And so I've got a velocity, and then here in my process, so every every cycle through, I'm modifying that. Here's my um, gravity, and here's my left and right controls, and then down here is my teleport. And we'll look at this in a second, but this is really the important piece right here, and uh, I'm going to further simplify it by doing this and we're going to just set it to that for now. Um, so let's look at this. So what's the idea of teleporting is is we just change the position of our player character. That's all we're really doing. So I'm going to comment this out. This is for the fade animation that we'll look at in a second. And let's play this. So now when I hit the space bar, so I can write, walk left and right, uh, and that was this player movement stuff right here. But if I hit the space bar, I'm going to teleport up to 0, 0, at, which is right here. And then my uh, gravity will kick in and I'll fall to the ground. So what I'm going to do, uh, so I can change this, so let's go to 200. So this should be off to the right somewhere. So let's play that again. Now when I teleport, I'm off further to the right. It's a little hard to see, um, but I wasn't over. It was over here at zero zero. Now it's at two hundred. But let's do this a little bit more visually. I'm going to teleport to this position node that I've created, and there's nothing magical about this. I'm just using a position node, and I've got a little sprite there so you can see it a little bit better, uh, especially once we start playing because position nodes are invisible once you start playing the game. And these I think I find are real good for spawners and teleport positions, things like that. Uh, if you do make just a regular node, uh, like let's say I'm going to make a node 2D, these work just fine as well, but as you can see I can't really see it here in the designer and they you can easily get lost of where they're at. So we'll go ahead and use this uh, position 2D. And so here in my script, what I did, instead of hard coding a location, I'm getting the parent of this node. So the player, I'm going up to the main node, and then I'm coming back down into the position 2D. There's many ways you can get uh, get a path to the node. Uh, you could um, get it using a group over here, and you could do it uh, with the groups. You could do it all kinds of ways and you've probably seen those in other videos, but the point is is that I need to get a reference to that node so that I can get the position of that node and use it. So here in the script I'm getting get all this gets that node and then I'm just getting the position property of that and I'm setting that to the position of my character right here. So now what will happen is when I hit the space bar I'll jump directly to that node wherever it's at. So if I move it over here and then play again I'll jump up there. If I move it over here, play again, I'll jump over there. And finally, if I move down here, this is going to be funny, I'll teleport right through the floor and fall forever. So that's how these, um, uh, that's the basic idea of teleporting. Now, teleporting like that is kind of stark, especially, and I attached this camera to the player so that you could see that. Let's move this out of the camera space here and do a teleport now. As you see, that's kind of jarring. I go from one place to another, and I, you know, if, if that's happening quickly, the player could be kind of confused. So you almost always want to have some sort of special effects that goes on. And it could just be, you know, a little twinkle around the character to indicate that he's moving. Maybe he fades or something like that. But in this case, I'm doing a screen fade, and so I, th I find this to be a really good effect for doing this kind of a thing. And so let's go ahead and enable that. So that, that was these extra lines of code here that I disabled. And let's walk through these one, one at a time. So I'm going into my 
uh, canvas layer. I should have named that better. But this is a um, my little fade object here. And I've got a fade color rect. And all this is, is see this big orange box? I just created a um, fade color rect. That's a node type in Godot. And, or actually color rect is the name of it. And I made it bigger than my viewport, right? So it's bigger than this blue part. And then I made an animation player. And on the animation player, I created, let's see, two animations. I have a start animation, which just sets it to invisible. And then I have a, and that one also is set to play by default. That way, um, this will be invisible when it starts up. And then fade in will go from black down to transparent and fade out goes from transparent to black. And uh, you can adjust those by looking here. And right here, see these, this key? That's how I do that. So um, all I'm doing is animating this right here. Just like that. All right? So that's how that works. And there's no script on that. A good way to do that would be to move some of the scripts into that and have that uh, be able to just call a method there that says, hey, play this. But <clears throat> I wanted to show off this other piece of code, other line of code right here, this yield. What yield does is it stops this function. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but um, for our purposes, it stops this function and doesn't do these lines of code until after this finishes. So it says on the animation player, wait until the animation finish triggers, then you can continue on with these lines of code. So what happens is it plays the fade out, waits, and then it play it moves the position and then fades back in. So let's watch that in action. So I hit the space bar, my scene fades out, my player moves while it's faded out, and then it instantly starts play fading back in. So that's a much better uh, effect, I think. So let's go ahead and look at the 3D version. So I've got this simple 3D scene right here. And yeah, there we go. So 3D, I've not messed around with 3D and Godot, Godot all that much. Um, but you can hold down your route, right mouse button and use the WASD keys just like you're playing a um, first person shooter game and move around in the scene. So we can look here, I've created a block. And that's this thing right here. It's just a big flat block and I've made it brown. I've got a camera right here and you can kind of see where it's where it's pointing. And then over here I've got a little player character who's got a blue uh, cylinder and he's got a green little block on this front. That way you can kind of tell which way he's facing. And then over here I've got another one of those, instead of a position 2D, I've got a position 3D node. And that's where I'm going to teleport to. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like to, pl to play. And so I can move left and right, and I can teleport just like in the other one. And then I can move around there, too. So let's look at the code for this one. It's very, very similar. The only thing I changed is instead of a vector 2 for my velocity, I've got a vector 3. Um, for my gravity, instead of adding to the, well, I'm still adding to the y position. This, I think this is usually x, y, and then z. So I'm adding to the negative to the y position. I guess that's the one difference. In 2D, uh, up is actually a negative because 0, 0 starts right here and so y goes down or as y goes down it's actually a higher y number. But in uh, 3D, 0, 0 is right there and as y goes up y increases. So that, that's one little difference when you go into 3D. And then uh, input is just exactly the same. I'm just moving my uh, x and y velocity and then um, here's my teleport and just like before I've got this fade in and out. This works exactly the same. Let's comment it out for just a second so that we can see this working without it. And then th here's another difference. Instead of position you use translation and that's because in 3D uh, things are broken up into so I can hit, if you look at my little widget here, I've got these round things, and this is rotation. And so uh, in 3D, you have a 
uh, a position in space which is called the translation of space but you also have a um, rotation and I know it's sort of similar in 2D you've got a rotation because I could grab this guy let's say and I could grab this and I could rotate him like this and I'm rotating him um, but in 3D it's just a little bit different Ooh, I don't want to save that don't save <laughs> so anyways um, they're called uh, transla translation and rotation uh, right there and I'm using this self and that means on this class so since this is on my 3D player it's going to be this 3D player is what that self stands for you don't need that you can just do translation but sometimes I like to use it because it's a little bit more clear what's going on anyways let's go ahead and try this so just like before it just teleports right over there and you can teleport wherever you decide to put that uh, this little 3d 3d node so I can put it pull it up here in front of it whoops press the wrong button there we go and uh, you know if my character fell off the oh, I did it again <laughs> my character went over here and fell off the map ah, I hit the spacebar and he's right back so that's how you teleport in um, 2d and in 3d so I hope that was helpful and uh, if you have any questions please leave them and we'll I'll try and answer thanks bye